Judgment Day. Let's play hardball. Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Minnesota's Al Franken announced today he is quitting the U.S. Senate in light of allegations from eight women that he either groped or forcibly kissed them. Yesterday, after the newest allegation came to light, a total of 35 of his Democratic colleagues had called on him to resign. Franken said some of the allegations were not true. He said he remembered others differently than they were being presented. He's the second Democratic lawmaker to resign this week. Michigan Congressman John Conyers had been accused of sexual misconduct by multiple former aides. He has denied all the allegations but stepped down on Tuesday. Compare this to the Republican side of the aisle. More than a dozen women have accused President Donald Trump of sexual assault or misconduct. In fact, the president has seen the tape of him. He's bragging about being able to get away with assaulting women because he's famous. And Roy Moore, who could very well be the next senator from Alabama, faces accusations from multiple women that he pursued relationship with them or assaulted them when they were teenagers. In his resignation speech today, Franken addressed the contrast. Let's watch. Today I am announcing that in the coming weeks I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. Well, here's our White House spokeswoman, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, responded to those comments. Let's watch. The president addressed uh, the comments back during the campaign. Uh, we feel strongly that the people of this country also addressed that when they elected Donald Trump to be president. And I've addressed it several times from here and don't have anything new to add. And late today, NBC News can report that Republican Congressman Trent Franks of Arizona is preparing to resign his seat, according to multiple GOP sources. For more on this dramatic day on the Hill, I'm joined by Democratic Congresswoman Kathleen Rice of New York State, The Roots Jason Johnson, and USA Today's Susan Page. Congresswoman, thank you. Give us your sense of this day in history, the pros and cons of what was good about today, what was bad about today, whatever. How do you see the whole picture? Well, it's a sad day. Obviously, we are dealing with an issue that has gripped the entire country. And my goal in my involvement in this has always been to be a voice for the Congress to do the right thing, not to circle the wagons and take care of our own and show the American people that there are certain rules that apply to them and then certain rules that apply to elected officials. Now, although Democrats, you know, came, our leadership came to this issue a little late, they did call on uh, the resignations that have happened. And we need the Republicans to do the same thing. We need Paul Ryan to stand up and be the leader of his party. I know it's difficult for him to do that when the standard bearer of the Republican Party for right now is the president of the United States. And we know his history with this issue of harassment. Um, and but, but clearly, the Republican Party is all in with Roy Moore. And uh, that's not what the public needs. We don't need more people who have shown a disdain for women in the workplace and have harassed them. So my hope and my call is for Paul Ryan and the Republican leadership to get with the program and start forcing people out. Well, for pure consistency here, the president didn't just harass, he assaulted and said so in his own language. Should he resign in the spirit of what Franken did today? If the president admits publicly, as he has done on tape, that he assaulted women as a manner of habit because of his celebrity, saying he could get away with doing it and had done so, why shouldn't he resign today like Franken did, if you're being consistent? Well, said, I, have said before that he, I have said before that he should. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the president has shown himself impervious to the rules that are applying to mere mortal politicians here in the Senate and the House. Nor, that should not be the case, but for right now it is. And, uh, but, but that's a separate issue. Look, he's going to have to be held responsible for his support and endorsement of Roy Moore. Yeah. And so, too, are the Republicans who are all in with Roy Moore now. 
all in with financial assistance. They're, no one is condemning him. And it's not enough to say, you know what, if he wins and he gets here, we'll take care of it then. We don't need someone like him here, especially given everything that's going on. The American public deserves to have a government that works for them and is not in the primary business of protecting themselves. Well, I have to stick with you for a second. What do you make of the Republican hall pass on this? I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger got elected the governor of California after he made all those accusations. He said he would form a commission once he got elected to look into it. What a joke. This president did it on television. We've watched the tape a hundred times. He walks into the White House. He gets elected by the majority in the, in the Electoral College. What do you make of the Republican voter giving a pass on this to the candidate they put up last time and are putting up next week in, in Alabama? They're giving their people a pass on sexual behavior like this assault going after teenagers when you're in your 30s what do you make of those people who vote like this congressman well you know there's an old there's an old saying that you know voters get the people they deserve and whether you are a democrat or a republican if you are willing to to overlook allegations like this for your, because it's your candidate for political yeah. reasons, then I think that you get what you deserve. And look, my, my voice on this has always been to, to put politics aside. I am speaking out the way that I have because I'm a voter too. I'm a taxpayer too. And the constituents that I have heard from all across this country want the rules to apply to people here in Congress. And I hope that this is going to allow for a much broader national discussion, which in my opinion is long overdue, on this issue of harassment in the workplace. Thank you. I salute you. When it comes to Roy Moore, the message from many Republicans, let the voters decide. As you just heard, let's watch. I think he's going to do very well. Thanks, we don't want to have a liberal Democrat in Alabama, believe me. We think that uh, the allegations are troubling and that ultimately this is something that the people of Alabama should decide. It's very clear now that Mr. Moore is not stepping aside. He is the candidate. He's on the ballot. The election is in one week. And yep. that the president, the president has stated, he's made statements on this very clearly. The most important thing is to let the people of Alabama decide their election. People of Alabama are going to decide a week from Tuesday who they want to send to the Senate. It's uh, really up to them. I would support him. We will support him. It's a numbers game. I want Republicans to maintain control. Well, you have to say there, Susan, my fellow expert on politics, that in here pedophilia is trumped by politics. They don't care. The voters apparently would rather vote for the guy of their party, regardless of his sins or behavior or crimes. And pretty sharp dis difference you see there between two parties' attitudes, because the allegations against Al Franken are serious, but they're not nearly as serious as the allegations against Roy Moore. Of course not. And one reason I think the yeah. Democrats finally decided they would tell uh, Senator Franken that he had to resign was because they want to make that contrast. Right. They did not want to... I'm feeling for Fran here. They did not want to spend a, their capital. She looks yeah, really sad. Look at that picture. Yeah. It's such a sad picture for her and him as well. Go it ahead, is I'm a sad sorry. picture. And, you know, the fact is Al Franken was an effective senator, has been an effective senator, uh, got reelected easily after that very narrow first, first contest. But Democrats decided they had to encourage him to resign because they want this big contrast with the other party, and they want it to help them next year when Republicans are standing with perhaps Senator Roy Moore and Democrats have forced members of Congress, Al Franken, John Conyers, perhaps others to come, yeah. to resign. Jason, give me your sense of this morally, politically, where the works, ideologically, what does this say about the power of women today in politics? I think there's been a shift. I think this would not have right. happened the way it happened today 20 years ago. It would not have happened. I think you and I agree. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Chris, this is this is the power of women, and more importantly, this is men listening to women, right? I mean, the, women are not the majority in the Democratic Party. They're certainly not the majority uh, for Democrats in the Senate. But women said, look, this is a problem. Men listen, and, and Al Franken is going to step down. Look, I, I, there's a political element to this, but I think, Chris, we, we have to give the Democrats just some basic credit of this is just cleaning house. Look, I mean, you know, Minnesota is a fairly safe seat. It, it's very likely the governor will put somebody else in. It will probably be another Democrat that goes into that position. I'm fairly confident that there are great politicians in Minnesota who can replace Al Franken who don't have a history of sexual assault. Uh, and so I think the Democrats, this is really just their own internal house cleaning. One would like to think that Republicans would be capable morally or ethically or professionally of the same thing, but they don't seem to have any interest in that. Uh, even if it's a situation where it's a relatively safe seat, they still wouldn't step away from somebody like Roy Moore when almost any Republican get elected down there. Now to the valley of denial and absurdity. Al Franken had some surprising 
president and perhaps not wanted defenders last night. Fox News host Laura Ingram and former House Speaker Newt Gingrich warned of a lynch mob mentality out there. Ingram said the Democrats' real goal was to go after Roy Moore and President Trump himself. Let's watch. I'll tell you this tonight. Be wary of the lynch mob that you join today, because tomorrow it could be coming for your husband, your brother, your son, and yes, even your president. What you saw today was a lynch mob. This is a party which is losing its mind. These are people who grew up in a party which used to preach free love. Now they've suddenly curdled into this weird puritanism which feels a compulsion to go out and lynch people without a trial. Al Franken was a comedian. Comedians often do weird things. He was in the entertainment business. He was doing the kind of things people in the entertainment business do. Congressman, what do you make of your of Al Franken's new ally here, a, a team of allies? What do you make of this team of rivals? What do you call them? I don't know what to make of that. Would you like those people defending somebody you cared about? Go ahead. Your thoughts? I think they should. I think they should be ashamed of themselves to say that Al Franken is a comedian, and that's what you should expect from a comedian. Then how do you explain Donald Trump? How do you explain Roy Moore, who was a prosecutor and a judge in his life? And how do you explain a Blake Farenthold, who settled a case with taxpayer money for $84,000? It is well settled. He is saying right now, you know, it's enough. I'm going to pay the money back, and that should be enough. No, that's not enough. The victim in that case suffered real prof professional consequences, and he should as well. And the Republicans could, should call for him to get out. But I'm not surprised that Newt Gingrich and Laura Ingram take that that um, tact. I mean, that, talk about cynical. Talk about cynical and puritanical values. How about trying to uphold the traditions of the, the, one of the oldest institutions in this country, this Congress, and show the American people that whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, you're going to hold your representative accountable to behave in the way that they should behave and the high bar that we should have uh, being given the public's trust that's been placed in us. Hard to argue with that. Let me ask you, uh, Susan, about the politics. Uh, and Jason, too, I want you to ask you the same question. Do you think the American public are now going to see the difference between the two parties, that one publicly and with some pain have expressed a belief in women's rights to not being bothered by men, and that uh, it, may, it cost them a, a senator they respected a lot, who spoke their language a lot, and they're willing to show that even they, they care about this issue enough to sacrifice somebody basically like this that they could have used in further arguments. And the Republican Party, which we just heard from the cynical voices of Newt Gingrich and, and, and uh, Laura Ingram, I mean, these people are quite openly saying they're not going to use that standard. They're not even going to apply the standard. You know, I think this fuels the fundamental political dynamic that we saw starting the day after the inauguration when there was a women's march, enormous crowds, lots of energy. Women especially angry about Trump. Women angry right. about Trump. Women running for office. That'll be something else to watch. Jason, your thoughts about the possibly positive uh, education that the public are going to... I don't know how you can avoid the education in this. The, the worst you can say about the Democrats is they're too pure. And that's the right, stupid thing to right. say, but that's the worst thing you can say about it. These guys set too high a standard for public office. How's that for an argument? My opponents, the party of my opposition, right. they set too high a standard. You know, come on. What do you think? Right. It's, it, you know, that's, that's the thing. I, I think this is wonderful because it is a standard that we should all be following. It is, first and foremost, you know, Ning, Newt Gingrich is the last person who's ever been concerned about the morality of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, for that matter. I mean, those are not the allies that you want to have. But I think it's important that the Democratic Party has at least remained consistent. Look, they're not going to win over Roy Moore, uh, Roy Moore voters with this. They're not going to win over Trump voters with this. But what you can do, there's something to be said, and voters will pick this up. Voters don't like parties parties that aren't consistent. They don't trust you when you preach one thing and your policy is something else. So for the Democratic Party to say, hey, look, not only are we going to complain about the war against women, not only are we going to be the party that represents women's issues economically and policy-wise, we're going to hold our party to that standard. I think it increases enthusiasm. It makes people much more happy about the party. It may not bring any Republicans over, but it will certainly make uh, you know, Democrats much happier. And they can bring some attention and some excitement to what might be Keith Ellison or uh, the woman lieutenant governor in Minnesota running for that position. I was thinking of that, too. So well, well said there, Jason. Thank you. Anyway, thank you, U.S. Congresswoman Kathleen Rice of New York State, Susan Page, and Jason Johnson. Coming